Hello students, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am standing here in front of you today with a new poem called The Wonderful Words. And the uh, poet of this poem is Mary O'Neill, the famous poetess who has gifted this beautiful poem on language or use of language. So before starting, we can understand, we, we should understand that we cannot imagine the world without language. Whatever is in our brain, whatever, whatever is in our heart, we need to express it. And in order to express, we have to use language, we have to use words. And this is all written in this poem, that words are very important, very vital part of our life. When we have a thought, when we have a uh, emotion in our mind, that has to be expressed. And the best way, the only way to express that particular emotion, that particular thought is, or are the words. So this poem, The Wonderful Words, describes very beautifully the importance of words in our life. So if we see the first four lines, never let a thought shrivel and die for want of a way to say it, for English is a wonderful game and all of you can play it. So here you can see that the poetess is uh, appealing to us, she is telling that you should not allow a thought to die in your mind, to die in your heart, you should express it. And how you have to express, how we can express English by using the language the English language or any language, your mother language or Assamese language, Bengali language, Tamil, Telugu, whatever it is, we can use our own language or we can use English to express ourselves. We should not let a thought die in our brain and we should not allow a thought to die, shrivel, to dry up. So for one of a way to say it, we should not stop it from expressing. We should try to speak it out by using the English language and all of us can play it. The poet says that English is a very good language, English is a very easy language, we can play with the language very easily. All that we do is match the words. So whatever thoughts are there in our mind, we have to find the correct word and use those words to express our mind. To the brightest thoughts in your head, whatever thoughts are in your in our head, that has to be matched with the words. So they can come out clear and true. So when we have to express, we have to express it very strongly, very boldly, very courageously, so very nicely, so that the, to whom we are speaking, they can understand it. So whatever thoughts, the brightest thoughts are there in our head, we should speak it out clearly, truly and handsomely groomed and filled. We should use, we should express it very wonderfully. For many of the loveliest things have never yet been said. Again the poet says that many of the important things, many of the important thoughts are yet not expressed or yet to be expressed. Maybe you are the people who are going to express, you are going to bring new things into this world using words, using words to express whatever you are thinking, whatever is in your head. So many of the loveliest things, many of the beautiful things of the world are yet to be said. So use the English language, use the correct English word to express your thoughts wonderfully. So in this first paragraph we can see that there are some poetic devices the poet is using. For instance, she is using rhyme scheme. The things are rhyming. So you can say, for want of a way to say it, the last word is it. And again, all of you can play it. So, this it and this it. If we regard it as A, we can, we regard it as A, then rhyme scheme is A, A. Then again, to the brightest thoughts in your head and handsomely groom them fair. Again, head and feather rhyming. So if we consider it as A, this it as A, then head B, fed B. So the rhyme scheme of the first stanza of the poem is A, A, B, B. 
and the, how to find out the rhyme scheme? We have to look for the last word of the line. So in this line, it, fourth line, it, sixth line, head, and handsomely groomed and fed. So these are the things. And again, for have never been yet been said. Again, fed and said are rhyming. So A A B B B. So this is the rhyme scheme of the first stanza. Now let us go to the second stanza. Words are food and dress of thought. So whatever thought are there, whatever thoughts are moving in our mind, moving in our mind, how how will you tell them? How will you express them? We will express with the use of words. So words are the food, words are the dress. So this is the use of personification. When an abstract thing is uh, considered like a human being, thought, we cannot touch thought. It's an abstract idea. But thought has been described as a human being and this device is called personification. So words are the food and dress of thought. For thought, food and dress is word. They give it its body and swing. So a thought cannot automatically express itself. The thought has to have some word. So words are the food, the dress and it gives thought body and swing, body and movement. And everyone's longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing. We are bored of listening to the old same things again and again. When we listen to something new, when we listen to, when we hear something fresh, we get refreshed. So, everyone is longing, everybody is waiting, everybody is curious. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, everybody is curious to hear some fresh and beautiful thing. But only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes. So whatever thoughts are behind our eyes, in our mind, in our brain, that those words can come out only, those thoughts can come out only through words. So only words is the, or the only weapon that can free, that can bring the thought out into the world so that others can listen, others can appreciate those beautiful things. Maybe your mind is holding now a marvelous new surprise. Maybe your brain, maybe her brain, maybe his brain, some brains are working. His brain is working on a new thought and he can use a new, uh, he can use new words, he can use words to express his new thought. So those thoughts can be brought out by words and the world will get a marvelous new surprise. The world will get a marvelous, beautiful, fantastic new thought by using the words. So here also we can see that the poet is using the device, poetic device called personification to express, to, uh, to refer to thought as a human being and he says that the words are the food and dress of thought. So, in this way, we can see that in this poem, Mary O'Neill has very beautifully expressed that without it, uh, without words, we cannot express ourselves. Words are the only uh, carrier, only medium through which we can express ourselves. And there are many thoughts. Each and every one is different. Each one of our are different. So all the thoughts are there in the brain. So each of one is thinking new things, so those new things can come out only through words. So by using the English language, we can easily express ourselves, express our thoughts, express the new things that are going in our mind. Now if we come to the uh, question and answer part, working with the poem, you can see that we have been given a uh, task of filling the blanks. So with your partner, complete the following sentences in your own words using the ideas in the poem. So, in the first stanza we got this one, the poem started with this idea that never let a thought swivel and die. Do not let a thought swivel and die because English is a beautiful language. We should use this language to express our thought. English is a beautiful language with words that everyone can play. So, English is a very easy language. We can use appropriate suitable words to express to express ourselves by using good words. 
One has to match. One has to match words with thoughts. Whatever thoughts are there, we have to find out the correct word so that we can express it properly. Words are the food and dress of thought. So the words are. This is an example of again personification. Then again, we have been given some important lines from the poem to explain. All that you do is match the words to the brightest thoughts in your head. So as I have said that. Words are the only medium through which we can express ourselves. So we have to match the words with the right thoughts and we have to express it so that the world can understand that we have new ideas, we have good ideas, we have beautiful ideas. For many of the loveliest things have never yet been said. So many things are yet to be said. There are many things which have not yet been said by anyone. So by using words we can express those new thoughts. So many loveliest things are yet to come and maybe tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you are the people after some years, after a couple of years, after 10 years, 20 years, you are the people who will bring beautiful thoughts, beautiful things into the world by using good words. And everyone is longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful thing. So as we have discussed that we are bored of hearing the same thing again and again. So, we should think a phrase, we can think of some new ideas and everybody would like it, some fresh and beautiful thing when it's said, everybody would like it and everybody is waiting, longing today to hear those beautiful things. But only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes. So behind our eyes, in our brain, there are many thoughts going on, moving on, we are thinking many things. Now you are attending the class, now you are hearing to me, but many things are going in your mind. So, whatever things are there, if it is a new idea, if it is a beautiful idea, you should bring it using words. So only words can bring a th thought out from the prison behind your eyes. So, I think that you can uh, easily write these question answers, the fill in the blanks and the explanation. And I thought that, uh, I think that you all of you have understood this beautiful poem written by Mary O'Neill. The name of the poem is The Wonderful Words. Thank you. Have a nice day.